Welcome to Arcing Suns. It's May 7th and May 8th for us, 2018. So what is Ascension in Christ? Ascension is all about rising from a prostate or humble position to the place purchased for believers on the cross where we are seated together in Christ Jesus in heavenly places. And we have all been given a royal invitation in Revelations 4.1 to come up here, and God will show us what is on his heart if we go surrendered to the perfect will of Father God. So our initial goal always is to get to know God better, which is always a component of these ascension experiences in Christ. And then our another goal is to actually see the life of Jesus made manifest. manifest. So um, we are all equal priests. And so we all can contribute in this ascension. Sometimes there's silence and that's just because we're looking and hearing and tasting and smelling so we can contribute what we're what we're experiencing so feel free to share if you um, have something different than than others but the goal is to all stay together and we also want to honor each other's contributions and things that are being highlighted in the spirit you'll you'll have a sense if it's time to um, share. All of our voices are important. We're all active participants and it's all about unity. So that's why we all like to stay together. So we'll lay down any personal agendas and we're just going to go step by step uh, and report. And of course we can use all of our five senses. Seeing is also perceiving. Don't rely on what you know. And then he's going to bring it all together in the end. Because, of course, we cannot lean on our own understanding. So we don't want to process. And we want the Father to take us wherever he wants us to go. So before we um, go in, are there any questions? Okay, so we're going to step through Jesus the door and enter the veil of life to the Holy of Holies, moving beyond the inner court. Thank you, all heavenly hosts, um, to assist us. We also thank the men in white linen, the cloud of witnesses. We want to put ourselves in divine right alignment by placing our body under our souls and our soul under holy, our spirits and then our spirits under Holy Spirit. Offering ourselves as living sacrifices, renewing our first love covenant. And we also choose to open all of our gates. And we most certainly seal off all ungodly portals and dimensions. So let's go in together. So when we um, we want to be able to sense seeing each other in the spirit so we can be together and sometimes we'll hold hands, which helps with our, our unity. Welcome, Alana. Thank you. Alana, I'm not sure if I 
Um, remember your name? Have you joined in before? She's been with us on our Wednesday calls. Ah, lovely. Good. Yeah. Oh, I've just stepped in. I was thinking that's intentionally, as Kathy said, come together in the spirit. We link up in the spirit sometimes as they're holding hands, coming together as he leads. And as nearly always, it feels really joyous to me. Does anyone else feel what it feels like? It feels um, like a lovely sense of joy and delight, excited anticipation as we come together. If you've ever used jumper cables to uh, start, you know, one car with another, when you put the cable onto the poles of the battery, it sparks. And I see that as what is happening when we hold hands. There's like sparks as we start to arc and then get humming. And then I yeah, see, so that is a yeah, once we're all together, we start to uh, eliminate the area in white light. As we're holding hands in a circle, I, I, I see this all frequently is that we, seems like we're always moving in a fast pace in a circle. Like we're spinning. I have a sense of all of us, uh like stretching out our hand, touching a, a pole in the center. It's like a flat pole, tall, like steel pole.
Yeah, see the pool like a, I'm sorry. Oh, no, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, I get a sense of it too. Eager, happy. I see the pool like a, almost like a hub. And we're like the um, spokes. Yeah, spokes. Seems quite fiery, maybe a fire wheel. Fire and light. How's everybody else doing? And even if you see us somewhere else, that's fine too. Feel free to share. Because we're all multi-dimensional, so we can be in more places than just one. And if anyone's wondering, we do use the typing chat, so you can type in and we keep an eye on the, the chat as well. Yeah, I saw us as um, almost like a fire wheel. Um, Kathy, right before you had said about the spokes, I had seen that as well. And like a, um, a fire wheel, and spinning upward kind of as um, going counterclockwise, kind of, you know, when you do a, um, like a sparkler at night and you're spinning it around and around and it kind of makes that trail behind it. I was seeing a spinning upward and kind of making that fire trail. And I was seeing us go, um counterclockwise as well. I confirm about um, going upwards. I, I felt us being drawn upwards like, as though up the flagpole. Didn't necessarily get a sense of the top of it though. Seemed to keep going. I get a sense that the top of this pole is actually fluted out like a trumpet or a, um, yeah, some kind of a trumpet. And so the, the pole is actually the, the body of it. And I think that it, it appears to me to be of a burnished copper.
I've gotten this picture of uh, the fire wheel, kind of like that we are contributing fire to a kiln, almost like a blacksmith fire. It's kind of um, making something. And it wasn't until you mentioned trumpet that I just felt the Holy Spirit and say, yeah, yeah, we're in the process of making a trumpet almost in a, in a furnace or with a mold. I missed a bit of that, Max. Did you say that uh, it was like we were being formed? Uh, I was saying that we, like the fire that is coming out of this wheel, or the, the unity of us, um, is almost forming a trumpet. Uh, kind of like blowing fire into a, into a mold, or pouring metal into a mold. Was the very last bit after blowing into a mold? Pour, pouring metal into a mold, like yeah. the trumpet, was like we are creating a trumpet. Oh, wow. Yeah, well, the trumpet and the, the bell of the trumpet felt significant to me. I straight away when Sandra said it, I got a sense of the, um, the frequency, the sound, and also yes. releasing a sound. Spreads yeah. outwards. It was a releasing outwards. Yeah, I I feel like it's a, it's you know it's ginormous. It's absolutely huge, and our wheel this, that is. Uh, formed around the the, the centre of this trumpet looks really small in comparison to the size of it. And as the wheel spins, it goes up and down that um, you know that pole or, or the the long part of this this trumpet. And it that's right. I see like a sound being sort of thrust out of the trumpet whenever we're spinning that wheel or that wheel is spinning it's producing a sound that's coming out of the top and it's to do with the spinning and the fire and there's a releasing in that sound absolutely yeah awesome I think it's some kind of a call. It's a call. Probably like what a shofar also will sound, make the sound of a call. And this is a this is um, it's it's like proclaiming out, but it's also calling in. Could the trumpet be a type of coronet? Yes, I, I'm not good with instruments. It's a long, I mean, a trumpet is probably the wrong word. It, um, 
you know, you see, you see pictures of angels with these long, um, I don't know, I don't know how to describe them. They're just a long tube that, that comes out at the end like a trumpet or, you know, a, that um, opening at the end where the sound comes out. But it's quite, quite long and simple, very simple in its, um, in its form. I, perhaps like they would use at, the, at, a, at a coronation. I'm thinking of in England, you know, when they have the pomp and the ceremony of uh, something that the Queen is attending or they will have it in, you know, in the weddings that are coming up. Uh, or proclamations, they have the courtiers who sound these sort of long trumpety things. And yes. it's, uh, does that make sense? <laughs> yes, actually, that's what I was seeing too. It's a coronet. And, ah, it's, okay. and it's for coronations. Ah, there you go. And sometimes they have flags on them. Yes, that's right. I think this one, because it's upright, is it doesn't have anything on it except this wheel that we're all a part of, which is spinning up and down. Could that mean that we're all acting as a herald? That was the word I was hearing. So we're, we're heralding uh, a call or an, an announcement. And I get a sense that the coronation will be for many. That there either, either is happening or it will be soon many being crowned. Does that ring true? Um, yes, because I've... I believe this is what I've seen sometimes before the Lord has showed me that we can actually act as those who play the coronet and then others actually follow along in our train. Yeah, I feel like this is not just for us. I, I couldn't, it's like I felt like there were others that were gathering behind us and looking on. So that, I think that sits with what you were saying, Jeanette, about them being in the train or following and, and that it's for, it is, it's for others. It's a heralding in.
I don't know if this will sit with others, but before we started talking about this, I saw that below us was um, a placid ocean that was um, a nice green color, green life. The ocean, I believe, was reflecting um, the life and the ocean represents those who need to come up, the many people that are in the oceans. Another aspect of this that I felt before, and um, I don't think it's been mentioned, is when we first connected to the, the trumpet in the center, like a flagpole, um, or spokes of the hub, I really felt enormous power from being connected to, to the center. And I know it's, you know, um, power comes from from Jesus and from the Father from direct contact with him and everything he blesses us with and so I just was feeling that again and felt to say it the enormous power that came from being connected in as we were all touching the center I felt John the Baptist step into where we are. And it's almost like his body's, I don't know if this is a body, but like it just, I just smell of honey. It's almost like his body's dripping with honey, the smell of honey. Oh, that's nice. That's really, I like that. And um, just to state the obvious scripture does say that he ate um, honey, didn't he, when he was in the wilderness? Honey and, honey and locusts. Drawing in his whole ministry was pointing towards the coming of Jesus as a one who proclaimed the coming of, of Jesus. And so that sits in with that whole sense of proclamation. I, I, I get the sense that when the sound goes out of this, and that, uh, the sound blasts forth, then that sea underneath becomes 
active and it's no longer placid or even calm, it begins to stir and it's a response to the sound. I agree with you, Sandra, because as you were saying that, I started to see ripples. Yeah, there's a stirring beginning to take place. And it's directly related to a sound that's coming out and going forth. I almost, I get the, the sense that this is a sound of awareness. It's not quite the same as, a re, as revelation, but it's just an awareness and that people will pick up the sound. They will hear the sound and it will bring an awareness within them. And that's the rippling in the sea. It's all kind of connected. It's almost like I can see people here on the earth and they're going about their daily lives and then all of a sudden they're stopped in their tracks because they hear something and then awareness dawns upon them. So that's a picture of what's happening with this trumpet. Sounds like a governmental act.
feel like they're bringing together a lot of a lot of exciting details here and i i felt the lord had said there's more pieces of the puzzle and we are getting them um a couple others i'm thinking um the sense of honey john the baptist um with the fragrance of honey i felt it was symbolic of the promised land and we're fully entering into all the promises of the Lord with heavenly realms realities. And I feel the, the fragrance of the honey is this, is the heavenly realms realities and now unity connection with him. And I'm excited about that. And then also my mind was reflecting again on the forming a trumpet as Max was saying, with like a, like with the blacksmith, molten metal being poured. I feel like uh, we are being formed and shaped to be these heralds, to release and announce and call others in. Yes, because when I looked at our hands being placed on the on that um, central pole, it, it appears like they're actually um, like mel melded into and, and have become part of it. Like it's not like we're holding on, we actually are connected. Yeah, I agree. And that fits with how I saw it in a way I saw um, like our spirits being all connected. We're in the fiery circle, all connected, touching the center. I felt it was coming through us, releasing through us. And I feel like what John the Baptist, because um, I was having, I was just feeling his clothes. How come it would be dripping with honey? And so I, I felt like I taste of it, and it was just a, such a sweetness, and it was just set enormous power in in that love. It in that. It's almost like he loves. It's almost like his his testimony has been. It wasn't what I thought, you know, I guess it's from my background thinking, you know, he would be telling people to repent, um, you know, in a really harsh way, you know, he would be preaching to the people, but it's almost like there's that sweetness inside of him. It's, it emanates all through him. And it's almost like, um, I'm feeling like I'm re actually, because when you say clearing that, it's almost like I'm receiving clarity. Oh, that's what the sound of heaven's calling is about, and it's almost like it's almost like the Lord. It's almost like a, he's, he's releasing it, you know, to the church. It wasn't preaching, you know, the fire and the brimstone, but it's all about the the love of God, you know, how you know the sweet the sound it is, and there's not a sense of, of punishing, you know, someone. But it's you know his loving kindness, how he draw, draw uh, you know people to him. Yeah, absolutely, his kindness that draws us. Yeah, it's a really key insight. And it's that sweetness. I just, I heard, you know, that scripture, taste and see that the Lord is good. It's his yeah. goodness. Yes. And, and as you said, his love and his kindness. I just want to... 
Um, I just want to uh, connect with that, just saying how um, oftentimes we hear a truth and it just tastes so sweet, like honey, the tr that truth is sweet too, and it provides clarity. I was reminded of um, Jonathan after he had been out and he was famished and he needed sustenance. And so he dipped his hand in a honeycomb and he, he ate the honey in the comb and, and it brightened him. And, and, um, and, he, and he said that it, it, it uh, revived him. Another thing that God was reminding me right now about John the Baptist was that Jesus said that he, had, he came with the spirit of Elijah. Um, and that involves turning back the children to the fathers. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned John the Baptist again. I just was pondering, are we meant to engage with him more? We haven't much in these calls connected with a lot of witnesses, but, um, but I'm beginning to more and more, and I know we don't need to be shy to see what they have for us. It's all as the Father leads, as the Lord leads. So I just felt to honor John the Baptist and, and just be in a position before him to receive, see what he has. I just felt to hold my hands out so that he can fill them with honey. <laughs> nice. Well, it suddenly feels enlivening. Was that the word for Jonathan? Invigorating. Mm.
I feel like there's a blueprint um, that John the Baptist carry because it's when uh, Jeanette, you mentioned about uh, Jonathan, No Testament, and how it revived him. And it's almost like something that has to do with tasting the honey, it revived the body. It has to do with the um, realign, realign the body or uh, the heavenly realignment of our body, of, of, of our, even our physical body. I just pulled up the verse Proverbs sixteen twenty four, which says, "Gracious words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones." That's good. Did everyone catch that? Or should we hear it again? I can say it again. Yeah, that'd be great. Gracious words or kind words in other translations. Gracious words are like a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones or healing to the body. Mm. Mm. I believe that it's possible that this, the governmental act may involve a, um, the ecclesia itself and things that have not, have been the opposite of what we're saying that have been happening in the ecclesia. But now God wants to make it right so that they can hear the right sound and they can be healed. And they can really know what the honey is that's of the of the father. Yeah, well said. They hear the word and respond and they come and receive the honey. Honey from heaven. I get the feeling that there's a, a deep longing for that among um, those that are looking for more. They, they don't know what they're looking for, but they're hungry to receive. And then on the other side of that, there's the heart of Jesus who just so wants to pour 
his love and his honey, his sweetness and his goodness into those that, that are so hungry for him. So it's a two-way thing. I keep hearing this honey in the rock, this honey in the rock, over and over, this honey in the rock. Sandra, you know what the rock is, right? That's Jesus Christ. Yes, that's right, yeah. I believe this may be getting back to the Ecclesia again. The Lord is reminding me because of what Sandra said about the rock and honey coming from the rock, that Jesus is the cornerstone and that his Ecclesia is being built out of these beautiful white stones and on each stone is a name that only he knows and the person who gets it that there's honey in each of those rocks, and so people are beginning to know um, their true identity that he has given them and the sweetness that they are as they um, start to um, assemble before him. It's like he's bringing them together. He's assembling them. And so we're acting again as heralds that are heralding them in to come to the rock of their salvation. Yeah, that, that, that really touches something within me. <laughs> and it goes back to that calling. And uh, not only is the trumpet a, a, pro, or a proclaiming sound, but it's a calling and a call to assembly. So that really sits well with me.
And then also to remember that the sound um, blasts forth and the C underneath becomes active and, and stirs in response to the sound. So it's that opening of awareness. So I think there's quite a few parts um, to this um, governmental act. For us tonight. Yeah, when I just was engaging with that flow, with that sound, and thinking, how do I respond? I just felt a sense of being able to kind of rest and relax in myself and just have a sense of opening my spirit wider for a greater flow. I really felt a sense of Jesus' pleasure as I thought of being connected in and I, as I thought of his his desire to reach the people as well, to give that honey from himself. Um, it was great to be reminded that it's his pleasure to flow through us. And so we just relax and enlarge our spirit to flow even more. I just got a sense actually of him. This is this is weird and amusing, but I don't mind saying funny things. Usually there's a few people at least who appreciate it. I got a sense of Jesus um blowing my trumpet. And you know that raspberry sound you blow into a trumpet? It was really quite amusing. <laughs> and felt felt quite funny, but very joyful. getting past the amusing side of it yeah it feels powerful just to feel his breath through me feels even like it's clearing out some cobwebs so to speak I felt the Lord talking to me about some scriptures and it, the scripture was about the kingdom of the God that has to do with the gospel, that the kingdom of God is within you. It's what Jesus said. And 
he said first the kingdom of god is near and then he said the kingdom of god will be in you and it's possible i need a confirmation that we're actually it's a call on the coronet to the kingdom and understanding that the kingdom's not what you've been taught in many of your doctrines it's not something you try to find and bring to you and it's not far it's actually the kingdom of god is within christ the door is inside of you he's right there you can enter into the kingdom Which ties to the um, the honey in the promised land. Kind of like our identity as the um, Joshua generation. Yeah, so I agree. It's good. But, and in order to be the trumpet, we had to be um, molten um, and formed into the shape. Of the um, coronet. And then it's like Jesus is blowing his air through us. Yeah, I was wondering if that if that might be our governmental act that um, wraps it all up, brings it together. Yeah, I feel like I have to put like a like a to-do list <laughs> like a parts like um summarizing everything does anybody else feel that we all combined into the one trumpet Yeah, because of how big it was. Well, we were all uh, kind of going around it. Yeah, and we were the spokes and the hub. Exercising the plane thereof. And I was kind of seeing the pole as an axis, an axle, an axis, no, axle that the hub um, goes into. Yeah. 
It's like we were one unity of frequency. As the trumpet. Mm -hmm. Yep. But we didn't have to go, we had to go through the fiery furnace in order to complete the, um, um, the process of the, the mold for it, for the trump, for the trumpet, or the cornet. Mm. And I felt when we put our hands on that central part of it, we became molded into it or attached and, and part of it. We were no longer separate from it. That's what I saw too, is that we all became a part of it. Like you, exactly what you said, Sandra. Yeah, I'm only wondering though, did anyone else get a sense? I I think I heard heard us all sounding in harmony, like with our uniqueness and our calling, we as though we were sounding at, at maybe different frequencies, but all in harmony. That's how it sounded to me. Kind of like an orchestra. Yeah. All one, the mystery of many becoming one. Yes, I agree with that. It's all glorious and powerful. So I remember and Kathy was feeling like wanting, um, is it steps written down? Uh, I'm wondering if we've captured all the key elements we've got. It was certainly key to be, um, we all came together and it was key to be connected to the center, to the one big trumpet. Are there any other key elements that are on people's hearts? Well, we have the, the sweetness of the honey. Oh yeah. For sure. And then the, um, obviously the frequency um, and Jesus as the rock the honey from the rock. Yeah. And his pleasure to flow through us. Mm. But did we all feel we received honey, tasted the honey or covered in honey, infused in honey? Did everybody engage with the honey? I felt like I received and I could go back and get more if I wanted to it was you know not a finite supply yeah it was plenty yeah good and then joining in the heralding mm -hmm. the announcing the releasing 
joining in with Jesus desire to stir stir up and create ripples down below right yep and for those who are new to governmental acts it's just it's important for us to um corporately um we can, we can call it legislate or or just um the act to bring heaven to earth um and also to um release from heaven to earth working with heaven Does anybody want to add to what a governmental act represents? I'm feeling new to this, so I want to just ask the question do we step back onto our mountain to legislate? Does that make sense? Um, well, it's corporate. We're, we want to do it corporately, so we would do it together. And the Ecclesia, um, actually, we have a mountain. The, uh, so it's kind of like the Ecclesia mountain. Right, okay, that makes sense. I would add it probably would help to have a sense of being on our seat of rest and ruling from rest. That's going to be helpful. Not necessary, I'm sure, but helpful. It's something really helpful to, to engage and remember and come back to. Yes because there's no striving in heaven. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just felt helpful for me to remind myself of that. Yeah, it's good. And sometimes just a governmental act could be as simple as us um, sounding like a trumpet, you know, releasing to earth the desires of, of our um, and, and God's desires from tonight's ascension. Yeah, I agree. I felt we would just intentionally link up again in the spirit and, and release. I think there's something powerful about combining body, soul, and spirit, linking them all up together as we express through our body, through our mouth. We might, some of us, um, express through movement. Some of us don't need to, you know, vocalize, just release. But however we, we all feel comfortable, how we feel led. Those who like being vocal could unmute their microphones and we hear everybody's trumpet blast and it, it really is powerful. Um, so you hear each other. I don't think I'd join in, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll draw, join in and blow in the trumpet. Is everybody um, in agreement with this? I am going to guess. Yes. Yep, fine by me. Yes. Who feels bold to start a trumpet blast? 
I could count us in. Okay. So everybody unmute so we can all be our powerful trumpets. <laughs> Well, prepare with a big breath. Let's come together in the spirit with the joy and delight of Jesus, partnering with him. Are you ready? Counting down from three. <clears throat> three, two, one. Ooh, release this down. Ooh. <laughs> Awesome. Someone had a, a, a shofar or they're just very good at sounding like one. Do you want a shofar? I can blow one. Was there one? It really sounded like one. There was one. It's the shofar from uh, within. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was really good. Mary, would we like to hear the shofar as well? Then? Sure, Jeanette. We can um, seal this thing with that big, that, that shofar blow. <laughs> okay, give me one minute to change locations. Okay. okay. Well, what did anyone see, sense, feel with that? I just felt vibrations, like like a sound wave. Yeah, I felt the frequency of it. I'm ready if you want a shofar blast. Go for it. <laughs> Yeah. Nice. That's awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I see all the angels now with all of their long horn coronet things blowing as well. Kind of release them to blow too. Yeah. And I hear, I see people on earth saying, what was that sound? Hmm. To taste the sweetness of the honey and feel the, the wind of Holy Spirit. Calling them in. Come, come and taste and see that I am good. All right, so should I turn the recording off? Yeah, it feels complete to me.